We are headed, uh, leaving home base. We're going after our American Tajimi, Tajima, full-blooded Wagyu, headed down to Secura Farms in um, Navarre, about a 50-minute drive. Got to line him up for slaughter. Oh, goodness. That truck's got so much power that if he, uh, if he just mashes on the gas pedal, just flings the rear tires right out of the Earth's atmosphere, straight into orbit. They're, they can just start orbiting the Earth. I don't really like air conditioning. You guys good with that? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> just windows up. What's it registered? 93 degrees. It feels great. It's, it's like an OSHA violation is what we're, what we're doing. We're at the local feed co-op to get a weight on the truck and trailer which Seth's truck ironically weighs 100,000 pounds because of all the engine parts that it has in it. That helps it keep its gravitational rotation. Yeah, otherwise it, the whole truck would go into orbit. <laughs> oh, he wants me to, he's, he's got to turn around. Okay. Doing a little work here on the farm. Hey, you got to stay in the truck or get out the next time or else that's 200 plus pounds of beef that we're gonna gonna pay for that we don't have to first time something's weighed over six figures here <laughs> okay. so the tajimi bloodline um you have four uh japanese wagyu and Tajimi are the ones that marvel the most and therefore they are the only portion of the bloodline that can go to Kobe Bee. Kobe being a uh, distinct region uh, where those cattle come from that qualify for Kobe. But first they must be of the Tajimi bloodline. Francis, how how do we wind up with a full blood? What's the process to get to a full blood Tajimi? Uh, you have to select the lines of uh, breeding. And the cows have to come straight from Japan, descendants of the cows that came from Japan. That's the first part. Then you select the lines that you you want. Mm -hmm. And this Tajima is mostly the line that came from Hongo province and those are the lines we select mostly and the, the, the tricky part is because there is no 100% Tajima left. Really? No. Yeah. If you go to Hongo, yeah, you can get some, but outside of Japan, they, they, yeah, they, they, don't, they don't let those genetics go? They don't, I mean, they, even they went away from it for me to capture purposes of efficiency and it's just not very efficient to grow Tajimas because they are just slow growing and they don't get very big. Your genetics are pretty much you have to keep pretty you know your record keeping and all that stuff like where you're coming from and yep. basically you're you're you have a ton of genetics involved. Pretty much because we, we got like we can choose from 300 heads right now. Oh mama cows. Really? Yeah. And the bull selection, you AI, I mean, it is pretty much like they gotta be like thousands of them out there. Kip is Kip. Don't don't send Kip to White Feather. I'm already I'm already getting I'm already getting a, a connection to Kip. Well, she, well Beth is that a does female? Beth does a very good job of handling this thing. For That's sure. That's why they're friendly and they're, they're calm. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, look at the environment they're in. I mean, it's it's clean. There's tons of fresh air, fresh water. So how long how long do you have one of your full bloods? Like the one that we're picking up today, how long is he on feed? Over 500 days. Four or 500 days? Over so 500 days. Over 500 days. Yeah. So a lot more care goes into it than just a conventional yeah. feedlot steer. Yeah. Yes. And maturity is the biggest thing when you want mumbling. Got to let it's like it takes a long time to bloom. Yeah. Yeah. To mature. And once with the maturity hits in, then they start depositing their intermuscular fat a little, a little bit more intense than, than if you don't let it mature. If you take them too early. Yeah. I mean, they are pretty good at 28 months, but if you go beyond that. That's when they really yeah, finish that's when it off. It's really well. No, it's yeah. never yeah. settled. Like, like, oh, it's He's really getting yeah. bottle fed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one's taking a little extra care. <laughs> yep, he can't get up. Aww. He can stand if you stand him up, but... He needs a little strength, huh? Yeah, that's exactly. This is the bourbon mash from, what did you say, Jefferson's Reserve? Yep. They get a portion of that in their diet. Oh, it smells good. It smells like you put some maple syrup on it and some milk and eat it for breakfast. They like it. They gobble it's it down. A little bitter, kind of a bitter taste to it. Yeah. Kind of like granola. Yeah. Yeah, it say. pretty much does kind of <laughs> smell like granola. Some raisins in it. Bitter. Sussy. Yeah. And the first, the first bite is. Hey, you got to drive gr home. <laughs> the first, <laughs> the first bite's granola, and then it goes bitter. <laughs> Just yeah. pack it in your lip. <laughs> Boy, say, boys. Wow. This is a pen. That's we, some fine looking beef. Yep. This is a pen we sort from. Yep. So you can definitely see, you know, originally being draft animals, how they have those bigger shoulders, bigger shoulders, that bigger forequarter. Between you, Beth, and you, Francis, you probably know this pen better than we do. What What would your Say, I could, what I could, your recommendation? I could help you pick out a porterhouse out of the meat case, but you'd be better at picking one of these out of the pen than I would. It's 30 right here. I had my eye on him. It's 33. What was the other one? 30, 34. 34. 30, 34. 30, yeah. 33, 34. 33 looks like he's probably the heaviest. 34, man. Looks beautiful. So with the way that we, our knock box is set up, we have a head restraint. Uh -huh. It's actually better if we get ones that don't have horns, mm -hmm. just for future reference whenever they're coming to us. Because their horns kind of get caught up in that headlock. I think it's between 33 and 34. I agree. I like 34, but I couldn't really see much 33. There's 34 right there. 34 it is. See how he just sure he stepped right by us right there? He's ready. Take this made. He's to blame. Nope, he can only blame himself. See? <laughs> Three feet, a little more. Keep coming. Say when. Good. different than the buffalo that we're used to. <laughs> A little different than handling buffalo. 
regular Angus too. Yeah. It's a big difference. I love this guy. So <laughs> calm. They just don't, you know. Yeah, what'd that take? Five minutes? You would be out here for half a day sometimes just trying to work with you. Your disposition around them too makes a big difference. I mean, they don't get worked up that way. So many times we get people around bison and they start hooping and hollering and they just, the animals feed off of that. Yeah, the same way around them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Screaming. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It just makes life hard and then, you know, it's dangerous too. Oh, yeah. These guys don't know how big they are, too. No, that's what I say. They have no idea. It's sneaky. You put it wide and then weight sneaks up on you fast. Yeah. Talking about bourbon mash. The uniqueness of American Taijimi Wagyu focuses on the legendary Taijimi genetics. Old world feeding using dried bourbon mash from bourbon distilleries and meticulous humane handling to produce unmatched tenderness and sweetness of flavor that lingers on the palate for the ultimate experience. That is what we're witnessing today. The uh, unmatched tenderness and sweetness of flavor. If we're gonna let everybody know by the end of the this only video. Thing I gotta correct you is how you say Tajima. Go ahead. Tajima. Tajima. I've been practicing. <laughs> Tajima. I was at home. I, I think was, I, I heard had a Google up and I was like, Tajima. I think okay. I heard a Tajimi in there. <laughs> Tajimi. 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 Well, yeah. Francis, we're taking back to the shop. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Put him on the rail. See what he weighs. Yep. Let him dry age for a little bit. Butcher him up. See if Scott lets me take a steak. And cook it up. Yeah, you'll be hot not to. Just a little, <laughs> <laughs> little nugget. Seventeen ninety. Sixteen sixty. If I did the math right, why don't you double check it? But I'm coming up with sixteen sixty live weight. I told Lissa that they ate sandwiches, but those stayed in the truck with us, so we still weighed the same. <laughs> How you doing, boys? All right. Sixteen sixty. See you back at the store. If you want the very best innovative unique products designed exclusively for food processors we're the place to come to get those our purpose is to make food companies successful they don't have to manage hundreds of suppliers they only have to manage one primarily our core focus has been on protein but we also deal in all sorts of areas within food and beverage you know, soup sauces dairy produce you know, everything related to food safety. From gloves to knives to packaging, whatever it might be. We have 14 distribution centers across the United States. That enables us to service nearly every single customer in the U.S. There's an international logistics team that just watches things like container traffic. It's about building the best supply chain possible. 
and how do we prepare Bunzel to be the distributor of choice to service food companies that are indeed feeding the nation. Time to start the skinning process. 100% <clears throat> full blood Tajimi. Is that how you say it? Tajima? Tajima. 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 He's on the floor. You're going to hose me down. Let's uh, get the hind legs off and then we'll start the siding process. This is a first for me. I've never done 100% bourbon mash fed Tajima or, uh, American Wagyu. So good start. seen me use it before, Montana Knife Company, Beard Butcher logo stamped in there. This is their bare tooth skinner. I loved it the last time I used it. I'm using it again. Let's see how she sides. I already know that this beef's gonna be like cutting into a stick of butter. I mean, it's just so tender. in the first half 552 on the second half so she crosses the rail dressed at 1100 pounds remember it was 1660 live so that's 66 26506 percent because y'all are always doing my math so right there 66 percent from livestock to carcass hot hanging weight now it goes into our dry aging cooler. Um, I'm just gonna spend a couple weeks in there. Some of the moisture will evaporate from the carcass, so it's going to lose about 7%, we assume, while it's hanging in the cooler. But it goes in there for a nice long cool rest. <laughs> farm and all that stuff this isn't the beginning of the video you get this on camera <laughs> I, didn't notice. I wondered if you were filming it's monday morning obviously seth's up tight i'm loose as all i got my out. run in this I'm morning joking. we got to go in this thing weighs 552 pounds on one side and 548 in the other so i busted out the coat that helps us get traction but we got a probably 300 pound front quarter and 250 pound hind quarter. And uh, we break them down, get them on the rail and start cutting. Did you eat your Wheaties? I did. Oh, it looks good. It looks good in there. Looks good. That's heavy. Oh, I'm gonna need a. You need help? Need it's, a reset. It's in, the, it's in the. It's in the fat up there. That's why. Oh, you were holding down on it. It's, it's caught in the fat. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Oh. On a Monday, just right off the rip, 
Compared to like a regular grain fed beef, what is it? What is it compare? Oh, it's 30%, 40% harder. Yeah. It's one of the it's one of the harder things you'll do today, I think. He's got the. He's got the. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm. We got her. Butcher crunk going. How many boost ya? You've seen us break down cattle quite a bit. So we're just gonna go through this process. We're gonna highlight some of the primals. We're gonna show you the marbling, that intermuscular fat. Um, we're gonna do a taste test in the end of the video. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. If you've come this far, we started at the farm. Now we're at the processing, on the processing floor. We're gonna take it to the grill. We know it's gonna be phenomenal. Breaking it down between that fifth and sixth rib, separating that chuck from the rib section. This animal is, is big, but using that 10 inch knife to go through there, you can tell that that muscle and fat are real soft. So even though it's big, it's not quite as difficult as maybe a, you know, a bison or something like that. Bones are pretty soft. Look at that, mercy. You can actually see a little difference here in the oxidization. Um, this has been exposed to the air. This is not, this will bloom out. So you'll get that color will change from this darker red purplish to this brighter. Every single ounce of this beef is gonna be barbecuers just paradise. I mean, I don't think there's gonna be peace in it that would be bad. Starting on pulling out the skirt and I'll do the rib and etc. Scott and I, are, we're just gonna be working together. He's gonna to be doing the chuck, pulling the flat irons and stuff like that, but we'll work together. We'll highlight certain cuts. We'll get them on the table. We'll do the overview. Let's just get started. Spencer just made a comment and he said, boy, I bet you that skirt steak would be tasty. I guarantee you, Spencer, this skirt steak is going to be tasty. If just a regular grain fed beef skirt steak is good, you know, that one's going to be good. Look at that marbling in there. Wowza. So comparing this to a regular grain fed beef, I'm already noticing that this entire primal is just massive. The so one thing that we are going to be doing through this process is we're going to be saving the fat. We put the fat um, on our website, you can add it into ground venison or whatever you want to make delicious. but. We will be saving the fat throughout this process. Gonna be saving those dinosaur ribs. Let's get this rib all cleaned up and then we'll cut some steaks. Let's see, marbling is gonna be incredible. Every bit of this that I've cut through with my knife so far has just been like absolute butter. Get this fat cap off of here. Again, not to be confused with the spinalis. This is just the fat cap. Gonna be working the forearms and the fingers today. A lot of pulling and cutting. There's the fat cap. Let's get that yellow cord out of there. Let's remove these back ribs. Let's 
we'll save these. Somebody can enjoy these on their barbecue pit. Do a little bit of pre-trimming before we start cutting into steaks. So with these rib sections, normally I cut them like this, so where the bone was facing towards me. But with these, um, especially I've noticed with the Wagyu is that they, they're not very stable on the table. So I do flip these over and cut them with that, where that bone would have been that side down just because it makes them more stable. Um, I don't know, people have different techniques and different styles. This one's mine. I typically cut them the other way, except for these. Um, this is how we do it. So it's gonna start by squaring this up just a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about thickness of steaks. With these, we typically cut them about five eighths to three quarters of an inch thick, just because it keeps the cost per package, you know, per steak down a little bit for the consumer. If we cut these an inch to an inch and a quarter thick, um, obviously they'd be, they'd be pretty pricey. So we try to keep them a little bit more reasonable price in the package for the consumer. We're going to get us a nice big table full of these beautiful ribeyes. Look at those beauties. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty absolutely gorgeous Tajima Wagyu ribeyes. Bourbon mash fed. And if that doesn't look absolutely delicious, yo crazy. That now that is a stack of ribeyes. Let's separate the brisket, the shank, from the arm and the chuck. Um, we'll get these broke down a little bit more. Brisket. Separate the neck from the chuck. Scott's got to work on this for a little while. And while Scott and I are doing the fabricating over here in this part of the room, which I'm sure you've seen before, all of the trimmings and et cetera are happening on the boating table. And that's going to go into some delicious Wagyu burgers, patties, brats, some incredible stuff. So, so with these dino ribs, you can see this beautiful meat right here and this marbling this meat. So I want to take my knife and I want to go right in between this gristle, um, the fat, the gristle and the meat and just trim these up real nice for somebody that wants to barbecue them. So the key here is just to stay as close to that gristle line as you can. all the way down through there. Just a little bit more to trim here. And this is ready for your smoker. Look at that. Beef Tajima Wagyu Dino Ribs. So I'm gonna do the same thing with these Bront Ribs so you can see uh, the fat and gristle layer right there. So I just wanna take my knife and Go right down in between there. This is where the 10 inch knife comes in handy. Plow your way down through there. So these are four ribs wide. I want to take just a little bit more of that fat off of there. Beautiful. So there you have the dinos and the bronze, all ready for the barbecue pit. Man, put some 
Beard of Butcher black seasoning on these. Smoke them for six, seven hours. Yum. Tajima Wagyu bourbon mash fed brisket. Let's start trimming it out. Just wanna go right between that fat layer and that meat. Let's get this breast bone pulled out of here. Man, look at that marbling in that thing. Wow, look at that. That's gonna make an amazing brisket. Take a little bit of this heavy fat off of here. Whenever you smoke it, it's a little bit hard to render down that much fat cover. So we'll just take some of that fat off. And like mentioned earlier, this goes into ground products, some venison and things like that. So certainly not gonna throw this delicious fat away. And there you have a brisket ready to go on the smoker. All right, Scott, take a break for a minute. Got to warm it up a little bit. The fat's melting. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Nothing wrong with that. Ooh, that is delicious. Wow. wow, took a minute for that. Aerated body temperature to mm. warm it up and melt it down. Warm it up. Nothing mm. offensive about that at all. Incredible. Um, Grabbing up. I'm getting oh, butter. Wow, it's like butter. Yeah, I was gonna say that top note, that cream, pure vanilla. I'm getting beef. I'm getting butter. Some of the sweeteners. It's like toast. I'm getting bourbon. It's delicious. Ooh, delicious. This one kicked my butt, but check it out. Pull that cap off there. There's our flat iron, mock tender. Then we lift our blade out at the under blade. Got that chuck roll and then a Denver steak. So we have a whole video on what is Wagyu, but Wagyu cattle have a genetic disposition to switch on a gene. That's why they put all that intermuscular marbling in there, that fat. Um, there's more details on that video. But the other thing about them is they were a draft animal. So by draft animal, that meant they pulled heavy loads. And so they got these big, bulky front shoulders. And so when you break down this chuck, it's definitely evident. Like this right here would be the top of the, basically the top of the neck, the hump right there. So they got a lot of energy stored in their muscle and they got a lot of muscle and energy in their front shoulders. Hmm. Tajima Wagyu flat iron. I'm just gonna get all the connective tissue off of this. Get that gristle out of the center and cut some steaks. So we just start by getting all the gristle off of here. Look at that marbling. Isn't that insane? You ever seen anything like that, Spencer? That's crazy. While we're cutting flat irons. So now I'm gonna strip this silver skin off the top. That is, that is crazy. That might be the most marbled flat iron I've seen. Insane. Absolutely gorgeous. So now we're going for that gristle strip in the center. Wow. Goodness gracious. Absolutely incredible. 
let's see what the uh, inside of these look like. Are you ready for this? Wow. That, that is nuts. Look at that, Scott. Oh, that's a flat iron. Look at that. Incredible. I'll see what, amazing on these, see what this one looks like. On these Wagyu to find, like, find where the marbling just, it's like veins of gold through, through the muscle. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Man. Don't have to wonder if those will be good. I'm just hoping one of these makes it to my grill. Beef chuck eye steaks. We're gonna cut these about an inch thick. We've talked a lot about chuck eyes and rib eyes. I'm gonna grab a rib eye over here for comparison. So you can see this is the next door neighbor to a rib eye. It's a chuck eye. It's a more economical cut. So usually you can find these to be a little bit cheaper. They're still incredible marbling's incredible the flavor is incredible so if you get a chance pick yourself up a beef chuck eye especially if it's tajima bourbon mash fed waku look at that so i do have to say that i've cut a lot of a5 Kobe and American Wagyu and et cetera over the years. This is the first time I've had the pleasure of cutting an entire beef. Um, so to, to be able to see all of these different cuts and the amount of marbling throughout all these different muscles is just, it's incredible. I'm gonna leave a couple of these as roasts. So maybe somebody wants to make some pulled beef or something like that, but there you have beef chuck eye and a couple chuck eye roasts. This is that Denver steak. We're gonna cut these into uh, sukiyaki strips. So first we're gonna cut them into a strip like this, all the way across this Denver, about a quarter of an inch thick or so, sort of like you'd be slicing jerky, just all the way across. These sukiyaki strip packs are really nice. We sell a lot of them in our store because here again, it, um, you know, from a cost standpoint, it's a little more economical for the consumer to purchase one of these packs. They're lighter in weight and you still get a fantastic experience when it comes to eating Wagyu. So now that I have those cut into strips, we're just gonna go a few inches wide here, just like this. And then we'll get these all laid out on a tray. So we put these on trays and we mix some big pieces with some smaller pieces and we make packs of sukiyaki strips. Front quarter has been processed. You can see it all right here on the table. So these are the primal cuts. We didn't save a lot of roasts and things like that just because of the style that we cut for a retail store on something like this. But um, so this is the front quarter. Boning table is working on the trimmings from that front quarter. Now we're gonna move to the hind quarter. We're gonna get started pulling the flank, the tri-tip, the strips, the tenderloin, all that cool stuff. So let's do the hind quarter. Start with the rose meat. So we're gonna pull the Rose meat, and then we'll get to that flank steak. This goes into ground beef. Take a little bit of this fat out of here because it'll be easier to pull that flank if that fat's removed. I'm excited to see what this flank steak looks like. Okay. Get the membrane peeled off. It's 
it's a little bit harder to tell where to where to cut where the seams are because there's so much fat you can't see where the seams are that it works your forearms and your fingers big time once we get it started we'll get it peeled out of there there we go it's going to be a big flank steak that's for sure Oh, that was work. Okay, now let's get just a little bit of that fat off there. Trim this up. Man, imagine butterflying this and filling it with some feta cheese and some sauteed onions and peppers, coating it with some, maybe some chipotle beer to butcher bun seasoning. So you butterfly it, fill it with all that stuff, roll it, tie it, put it on the grill. Wow, that's massive flank steak. Look at that. Dandy. Let's go for that tri-tip. Located right here on top of this round tip. Go to that knuckle, cut through that knuckle. Follow that femur bone down. Start exposing that tri-tip. So this is the round tip and the tri-tip together. And we'll get them trimmed out here for you. So we start with pulling this cap off. And this, the tri-tip is located right in the fat cap of this round tip. That's the beef round tip. And this is the tri tip. So we'll just start trimming it out. Taking some of that heavier fat off of there. Fat marbling on this. Sometimes with these, with a softer fat, you can kind of pull some of it off of there. And there you have Tajima Wagyu beef tri-tip. Ready to get seasoned with Beard Bush Blend seasonings and put on your smoker. Beef round tip, we're gonna separate this down and we're gonna make some beef kebabs. Big thing here is just to find that seam. Once you get that seam started, you can sort of cut and pull. This sucker is definitely not easy to cut. You got to be on expert mode, don't you? Fingers and just forearms. Just because of the fact that it's so big and you want to cut some kebabs if I trim this out yeah sirloin tip makes really good kebabs it's nice and tender and it's got enough fat for flavor in it so we usually cut that into some kebabs Let's go for this big chunk of beef suet. That's gonna make some deer hunters happy when you put that in your deer meat. Spencer, maybe you could put a link in for that video that we did where we made the smash burgers and the Wagyu fat. Absolutely. Man, talk about making an incredible burger. It's gotta be careful right here because everything's hard and you don't wanna slip and cut into that, well, into these. You also don't want to cut into that tenderloin right there. We have an order for a whole beef tenderloin out of this beef. So 
I'm going to cut this whole beef tenderloin out and show you what that customer, very special customer of ours, not going to mention any names, but he's a special customer of ours, is going to get. That one's going to him. So I'm going to start by cutting, there's a knuckle in here. I'm going to separate this short loin from this round. So we find that knuckle and we come all the way back to that tailbone right there. We grab our hand saw. Go right through that knuckle. Let's start with pulling this whole beef tenderloin for that special customer that I talked about. So just get right up underneath here. Start up here by the sirloin, go all the way down along this vertebrae. Stay nice and tight to that bone. There you have that whole tenderloin. So let's just get it trimmed up. A lot of this work can be done with your fingers until you just need to make a little cut here and there. So we wanna remove this chain. So get that gristle and that fat off of there. Once we get that done, we'll get that silver skin off the top. So now that, that part's been done, just take the knife and go underneath that silver skin. Just stay nice and tight to the meat. And there you have a whole Tajima American Wagyu beef tenderloin. And this is gonna make that special customer of ours extremely happy. Let's break the sirloin off. See, so the thing that makes this difficult is that you can't see where all these different muscle structures are. So your muscle memory, knowing the anatomy of the animal changes a little bit because they're all hidden by that fat. Okay, here we go. Ah, I knew I'd get her. So there you have your strip section. This is the sirloin. Get trimmed up and cut some steaks. All right, let's get started on the sirloin. We're gonna pull the picanha off of this whole sirloin, and then we'll cut some steaks out of what's left. So this piece right here is the picanha, and the way you do that is you start right here where this fat line is. You just separate all the way down whole sirloin roast all the way out so we'll get this trimmed up a little bit more this is the picanha and these are the sirloin steaks picanha we're just going to leave this one whole when you go to prep this you cut it with the grain so normally we always cut against the grain but you cut it with the grain i'm just going to square it up a little bit just for the package but um, i am going to take a little bit of this fat cover off 
just so the customer doesn't have to pay for all that excess fat. We'll, we'll leave some on there. That way they can take as much off to their discretion, but that is gonna be a beautiful whole beef picanha. Cut some sirloins. That first one, we always just save these little, little sirloin pieces. That way they don't have that big gristle in the middle of them. And then we can go into our full sirloin steak. So normally a sirloin isn't marbled as much and you can see these are marbled less, but they do still have some fantastic marbling in them. And there you have the beef sirloins along with the picanha. That's that whole roast all cut up. Let's prep the strip section. Start by squaring it up, remove this tail. Now, now we will get this ready, cut some steaks. I'm gonna prep this strip section while Scott works on that round. We're on the home stretch with this first half. Scott and I had a discussion about, we're gonna cook some of this on camera and what portion of this beef we were gonna cook. And we came to the decision that we're gonna do some strip steaks. So a couple of the steaks I cut out of the strip loin right here. I'm gonna go on the brio. We're gonna, we're gonna cook them up. One thing you do have to be careful with this is your knife handle gets greasy a lot faster. So it's a little bit more of a challenge hanging on your knife handle just because you're, the way your hand gets greasy, you can see that handle. So periodically I just, I go to my apron and try to keep my handle dried up. So now that we got all those bones out, let's remove some of this back fat. This fat is so soft. Here again, going to make some deer hunters or some elk hunters happy when they pick up some of this fat off our website and add it to their lean meats. Make any burger juicy. One of the big challenges in whole animal butchery, obviously you saw this go from livestock to what we're fabricating. And then so we're a real authentic butcher shop. We've, we've got to make profit on it, on, on every animal. And when you, knock an animal in the head then you've got to sell every piece of it in order for the numbers to work on a prime animal like this you obviously have coveted pieces like your strip loin um you know all the steaks prime cuts you get into the round you have to get creative you might have to make a ground product which we intend to do with like a bratwurst we're looking into a, a like a bourbon brat um, because you're going to have um, some challenges now one of the things that we're going to do is we're not gonna cut this at all. We're not gonna put any um, just regular beef into the ground. Um, we're gonna grind this ex steer exclusively by itself. So it's gonna be 100% Wagyu through and through. A lot of places, if you look, they'll, they'll put 49% um, just regular beef in their ground product and 51% of the Wagyu, so they'll call it Wagyu. We don't intend to do that. But a, a cut like this, we're gonna make the top round or the inside round into some jerky. And on our bottom round, we'll likely just add it to our grinds. It'll help that grind just have a nice uh, firm texture with a, with a little leaner muscle in there. And we're gonna make some creative products so that we can move this whole animal because that is one of the challenges in whole animal butchery. Let's cut some strip steaks. We'll make some sukiyaki strips out of that. And we decided these are what's going on the grill. And Scott, I'm gonna let you do the honors. You get to pick in this stash which which two or three or six or 
you yeah, want to we'll grill. Take a look. See maybe once you get down to that ribeye end, what we're what we're looking at there. So since I took that back fat off there prior to cutting these steaks, you can see that they're pretty darn close to where I want them. I'm taking just maybe a little bit more off, but they're pretty. Those are pretty close to the amount of back fat you'd want to see on those. Certainly don't want the consumer overpaying for an untrimmed steak when these are going to be pricey as it is. My arm and hands getting tired. I wouldn't want to do five or six of these in a day. Yeah, he'd be hurting. But hey, I'm loving it. So you can see that last steak right there on that strip loin, how much that resembles a ribeye because the very next steak would be a ribeye. So there you have the entire beef strip section and I'm gonna get these laid out and let old Scott choose which ones he wants to cook. All right, which ones do you wanna cook? Those two? We go with those two right there. Good choice. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we got 20 ribeyes and 18 strips. Those two, we're gonna keep out separate. We get to eat those. And I'm just gonna get these all stacked up and added to our table. Gorgeous. Let's do a Thor's hammer real quick. Take that beef hind shank, score that meat around that bone. A lot of these cuts that we're talking about, you can refer back to videos that we've done. So same thing with this one. We've done a video on the Thor's hammer, if you want to see it. Low and slow, it's a pretty cool cut. Great thing about this one, when you get it all trimmed out like this, if your brother starts mouthing off to you, you can knock him over the head with it. We've got it on the table. This one worked us a little it's bit. A I mean, kicker. it's a butt kicker. Front quarter, you can see um, we have some skirt steaks, some flat irons, some of those sukiyaki pieces, those strips, some beautiful ribeyes, brisket, those beef back ribs. We have the dino, the bront ribs, some chuck eyes, a couple chuck eye roasts. Moving on to the hind quarter, we have a flank, tri-tip, we have the Thor's hammer. Two strip steaks that we're saving for ourselves. We're gonna cook these two up. We've got some pieces from the top and bottom round cut for jerky. Here's the rest of those strip steaks. Whole tenderloin for that special customer of ours. Hanging tender. Here's the sirloins. We have some stir fry, some kebabs, and that beef picanha. So this was the fun part. I don't know about you, Scott, but I know I'm looking forward to it. I'm ready this. to go now, but we got to cut, we got another half to cut. Well, I've got my steak, you've got yours. So we're going to take these steaks out, we're going to throw them on the grill, we're going to try these, we're going to taste test them. No doubt we think they're going to be amazing. But before that, we've got another half to cut. So next, next time you see us, we'll be at the grill. Processing is complete. Fire is built. Skillet is on the fire. Once that's hot, we're gonna throw a little bit of our fat into the skillet. Sear these steaks off. Give them a try. We're gonna start by taking the Montana Knife Company, the Marshall. Love this blade. And we're just gonna trim some of this fat off the outside. This is what we're going to throw in our skillet to sear this, these steaks in. So that's all it takes is a little bit of that beef fat. Get it right in the skillet. And get it some nice oil going. You ready? Ready.
about three, uh, pushing four hours, about four hours from the time this was still in the carcass until it's in the skillet. So that's pretty dang good. Are you guys gonna Oh my goodness. Look at that here. About a minute and a half in. I'll give these guys a good. I'll give this to you. Now we opted to go seasoning free. I know, right? From the Beard of Butcher Blend Seasoning Company. But we wanted to just cook the steak and then we'll put a little pile out of salt, our original blend, and our black blend. And then we'll dip it in those so we can get. My lord, I feel like I the steak, the, <laughs> the tong Test click them out. Oh yeah, look at that non-stick, the non-stick skillet. Ooh yeah. I have salt, beard butcher original, beard butcher black. As Scott mentioned, we went unseasoned. We're gonna slice these up, try them unseasoned first, and then go salt, original, and black. Just a little dip. Um, but first, we're gonna let them rest, and then we'll slice them. Are you ready for this, Scott? Mm -hmm. All right. We're just gonna go through both steaks all the way through. Boy, this Marshall's cut through there like it's butter. why I love strip steaks because you can cut all the way across the steak and then just pick each strip up and just eat the entire strip. Yeah, look at that. You ready for a sample? Toughest part of the job. Ooh. Going no that. no seasoning first. Going for the whole thing. I, I already tore mine in half. We're gonna go. Yep. Okay. Mm. Mm. Look how juicy that is. Wow. It just washes your mouth with that that umami that you get out of the A5. So just. That incredible wow. velvety smooth buttery flavor, a little bit of beef coming in behind it that's got a sweetness that's probably from that bourbon mash. We ate it raw earlier today and that was good, but yeah. man, obviously these steaks are going to be, they're going to taste the same because they, look, look they were from the same that. section. Now, I'll just dip it in a little bit of the salt just to try it with, you know, really bring out that. I want to try just a piece of the fat too. Mm. Mm. You went salt next? Mm-hmm. That just really yeah. just makes it pop. Now we're gonna go with some of the Beard of Butcher original seasoning. Oh, I just, a decade of memories from that spice just went right through my mind. Where it all I'm not gonna forget oh, about him. I'm not gonna forget Thank about you. him. I forgot all about him. I'm mowing through the flight of spices. Okay, we got another one. I'm on to my third. I think he's gonna Lissa? give you some, oh, Melissa. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. That's like butter in your mouth. Mm. Not good. Oh, holy smokes, what just happened? You dipped the black? Wow. That coffee molasses in that black just jumped right after I put that in my mouth and it complimented that so well. Try a piece of just the fat That's too. That's absolutely amazing. Some of that seared caramelized fat. And then we hung this beef for 12 days in our cooler. 
all those flavors just mm. sort of you know that that enzyme activity breaks down an already tender beef and then some of the moisture evaporates so you get a concentration of flavor here you go spencer try that Ooh, black. another one try that black Thank seasoning you. that is absolutely i'm with scott on that one Ooh, sweet. That we gotta get the kids in here. I'm gonna cut up some smaller pieces. Wow, for little, that little, takes to the next little level. Little gang. We have an audience. There's about ten kids standing behind us. They're all eager, ready for a chomp. So let's wrap it up. Tremendous special beef that we have here. Look at that. I mean, just incredible. The Tajima wow. Wagyu, full blood. You saw it livestock through to this point. It's and I, amazing. And I got to say, I had a blast cutting this thing. Because normally, like I mentioned earlier today, I've cut the rib sections, I've cut the strip loins on the Kobe, the A5, but I got the pleasure of doing the entire beef. And man, what a blast. This was a good one. This was a fun one. Very unique, it. very special product. Wow. So um, check out securefarms.com for more information on the beef. They've been doing it for 20 years here in Ohio. So we'll, we'll throw in a link in the description. Obviously they've got that part down pat. The Bearded Butchers, obviously almost 30 years since our parents, almost 30 years to the day since our parents got to the keys to the white feather meats, our, our butcher shop. So all that culminates then with the spice, the original, the black, it just made it for an amazing experience. One I too really enjoyed. Love it. And uh, if you want some of this beef in your local to our brick and mortar white feather meats, it's in our meat cases as we speak. So come in and grab some. Um, and we might just find a way to bring it to you too. So stay tuned to that. Pay attention to those details. Absolutely. Like Scott mentioned, fun video. We enjoyed it. Hope you did too. You got to see it. Start up the farm. We hooked up the truck and trailer. We went out to the farm. We picked the beef. Um, we brought it all the way to our butcher shop. You saw the whole process all the way to this cutting board right here. So until next time, see ya.